Oh no, these updates are often not um, uh, comprehensive. I'm not trying to give you an update on everything that's happened in the entire world of religious freedom, but just some highlights of things that I think are important. Uh, one of them relates to a couple of orders that have come out of the Supreme Court since we last met. Um, the, the most significant of which is uh, Roman Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn versus Cuomo. I'm sure some of you heard about that in the news, but there, uh, five of the justices on the Supreme Court essentially issued a stay against enforcement of Governor Cuomo's order related to COVID-19, saying that it violated the neutrality principles required by the Free Exercise Clause. This is a long going battle. Uh, it, you may recall the court reached an opposite conclusion out of Nevada a while back when the Nevada governor had an order saying that churches could not meet with any more than 50 people, even if they had proper social distancing protocols, but casinos were considered essential businesses and can continue operating. The court let that stand. Then Justice Barrett joined the court and in New York, uh, the dynamics shifted and the justices really, the majority in a procurement opinion really had, took issue with the notion that churches should be treated less favorably than other, uh, what are considered essential businesses by the governor. So in that case, it was things like acupuncturists, bike shops, liquor stores, shopping. This is already having um, effects in the lower courts. You're seeing a lot of lawsuits being brought now relying on this new Supreme Court opinion. Um, the Nevada case has, has been re-argued in the Ninth Circuit. And so this is all uh, moving very fast. Uh, if you wanna get a better sense of what it all comes down to, I would uh, send you off to the video that uh, of Alexander and I, when we talked about COVID-19 and the pandemic, the question really comes down to how do these various shops that are considered essential businesses compare to religion when it comes to undermining the state's interest of stemming the spread of COVID-19? And if they undermine the state's interest to the same degree or greater degree than a religious service might, uh, these orders are not neutral and they need to be struck down. I think most people where the disagreement comes from is whether or not they think retail and shopping really do undermine the state's interest to the same degree a church service does. But you had some weird anomalies in New York, like for example, a 10 person limit on a church that could hold 1000 people. Uh, it seems like kind of a ridiculous order to stem the, the spread of COVID-19. And a lot of that was, was feeding what the justices came to. Another, another decision out of the Supreme Court came down yesterday. And this was kind of a big deal. It was Tanzan v. Tanvir. Uh, the court held eight to zero that federal officials can be personally liable under the, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act if they violate an individual's religious liberty rights. Uh, the, only, the only justice that did not participate was Justice Barrett because she wasn't there to hear the case when it first came up. So that, that could have some long-term implications uh, in relation to religious freedom law and it's something to really watch. But essentially what happened there is uh, several Muslim men were put on the no-fly list after they refused to spy on their fellow Muslims at the request of the federal government. Uh, they couldn't get injunctions because the government changed their designation on the no-fly list. So what they did was they sought damages. And the question became, under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, where it allows people to seek appropriate relief, did, uh, does appropriate relief include damages? And eight to zero, the Supreme Court said yes. I think that's a relatively easy decision textually. The question will be, where, do the, where, do the, where does the court break down when similar things start happening in more culture war-related cases? On, a, uh, on another national level, and then I'll bring up one a little bit more interesting closer to home. On the national level, just uh, to flag for everybody, the administration is trying uh, to do its best right now to strengthen various religious freedom protections before the shift in power. Um, so there's a whole slew of rules and various things being uh, sent out right now to try to strengthen uh, religious freedom. We'll see how how much of that gets dismantled uh, with the new administration. It's hard to say. Um, some of it's not gonna be dismantled legislatively, I think, because there's gonna be a split government, but it will be interesting to see what executive orders come out of a Biden administration in relation to the various orders and rules that have come out of a Trump administration. Finally, uh, sent to us from our friends in Arizona, uh, Scott Brown and Scott, I'm sorry, what was the name of the, the attorney who worked on this pro bono? Dave Garner. Uh, Osborne Maladon. 
Yeah, Dave Garner uh, worked on a case as Ball v. Ball, and it's an interesting case. Uh, if anything, it highlights why people should hire lawyers, and in particular, lawyers that at least have a moderate sense of what they're doing. Uh, a couple got divorced, and they had an agreement in their, in their divorce agreement about church. Uh, what they said was each parent may take the minor children to a church or place of worship of his or her choice during the time that the minor children is are in his or her care and the very next provision said both parents agree that the minor children may be instructed in the christian faith uh, after the divorce and a year after they entered into that agreement the father joined the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and began taking the kids to church and the mom argued that that was not in accordance with their divorce documents that the that the church that the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints was not in the Christian faith. So that went to the trial court, it got litigated. The trial judge ruled in favor of the mom, allowed all sorts of testimony from ministers and others and concluded that the church was not part of the Christian faith. It went up to the court of appeals. The court of appeals ruled uh, more linguistically in the first part of its ruling saying that, look, um, this says that the minor children may be instructed in the Christian faith, that's permissive, not mandatory. Uh, it, and this is where I think lawyers need to come in. If they, if they really wanted that to be much stronger, they should have hired lawyers to draft it much more clearly to ensure that it meant to be mandatory, but also to ensure exactly what they meant by the term Christian faith. That gets to the second part of the Court of Appeals doctrine and what's really interesting from a religious freedom perspective, and I think correct, which is the <laughs> abstention doctrine. The Court of Appeals essentially said, Judges and courts should not be getting into what is considered a Christian faith or not. This is a long disputed theological debate and it is not a judge's position and certainly shouldn't be the government's position to take a stand on it one way or the other. And what they ruled was that the trial court really should have never gotten into it in the first place. Uh, I think that's right as a matter of law, both, both from the free exercise clause and from the establishment clause. But that is your uh, religious freedom update for the day. Does anyone have any uh, comments or questions before we uh, move on with the rest of our agenda? I just wonder what happened with the Ninth Circuit argument that Blaine Evanson sent a link about earlier in the week and how it looks like that case is going to come out. I didn't listen to the argument. Blaine, did you listen to it? Um, I did. It went really well. They have a great panel. They have uh, Judge Mylon Smith, uh, Judge Bennett, Trump appointee, and then Judge Boggs from the Sixth Circuit. Um, sitting by designation and it really could not have gone better. The judges were concerned with what they do, uh, how they instruct the district court on remand. And because there's, there's a similar issue in that case that there was in the Brooklyn Diocese case, namely that the governor changed the regulations while the case was up on appeal. So it's really all about the remedy and there will be some sort of injunction issued, sounds like. Great, great, interesting. Okay, thank you.